Yo YouTube, what's good? Welcome back to another video. This one is gonna be a special video because we just hit 40,000 subscribers, which you know may not seem like a lot to a lot of people, but 40K is still 40,000 people, and that's a lot of people. So to celebrate this, I got you guys with 40 DIYing tips that I learned from my past mistakes, past projects, and just my past experiences. Now a little disclaimer, these tips are for everyone. It doesn't matter what level you're at, whether you're a beginner, whether you're experienced, you know, something that could be common sense to you, you know, may not be common sense for someone else. But I got them all here on my phone. Um, there's no particular order. They're just in the order that I thought them up. But you'll see at the beginning, um, I had like bleaching in mind because the first couple of tips, they're all just bleaching. All right, let's start off with number one. Bleaching blue jeans turns a yellowish white. Now that's only if you bleach it 100% without diluting the bleach at all. Number two, bleaching jeans with hints of green turns the pants yellow. I did another capital DIY and I worked on pants that had like hints of green on it. It was the first time I ever bleached pants of that color so then when I did bleach them, it turned yellow and I was really surprised but you know, I learned something from it. Number three, bleaching black fabric turns orange. So if you wanna make some like fire designs on black fabric, black jeans, on a black shirt or sweater, bleach it. Number four, you can achieve different patterns when bleaching depending on how the clothes were wrapped or folded. You can do things like wrapping parts of the pants or whatever you're bleaching with rubber bands. And then in other areas, you fold it or scrunch it up. When you dip it into the bleach, it'll all come out with different patterns. So just experiment with that. Number five, using a towel, you can dab and wipe areas with bleach to mimic fading from wear. Number six, if you want baggier pants, try going up a size or two for a bigger fit in the legs, but you may have to do some alterations to the waist. Number seven, you can draw pictures on fabric with a paintbrush with bleach. I've seen online you can make really intricate designs, very detailed designs, but you know, obviously you gotta have the skill to do that. Number eight, save extra fabric scraps, extra butt pockets, bell loops, because they can be used in future projects. You never know. Plus, it'd be a waste to throw it away. Number nine, for light colored clothing, you can tone down the overall look by adding in darker fabrics or designs. Number 10, when distressing with a rotary tool or Dremel, I say Dremel for this video, to avoid scratching your work table, you can place cardboard behind the fabric to avoid this. Number 11, to keep the horizontal threads intact when distressing your jeans, always keep the Dremel grinding horizontally while moving up and down. Number 12, when distressing and there's a piece of fabric you want to cut off, use seam rippers to make it look like it was cut more naturally. Number 13, making cuts with scissors looks unnatural. There's no straight lines in nature. Number 14, Dremel work is dirty with lint flying everywhere. So having a guard attachment on your Dremel and a small vacuum at hand can reduce the mess. Number 15, if you don't have a serger, you can do a zigzag stitch along the edge of the seam allowance as an alternative. Number 16, using a wire Dremel is better for longer sessions compared to wireless, for obvious reasons. Number 17, during long distressing sessions, your Dremel can heat up. So wearing a glove on the hand you distress with can help prevent burns. Number 18, work your tools hard, but make sure to take care of them too. Taking care of them increases its longevity so you don't have to keep buying replacements if one breaks. Number 19, while hand sewing, you're prone to poking yourself with the needle, especially in the beginning. So to avoid this, you can use a thimble to protect your finger or you can just suck it up and take the pain because eventually you kind of just get used to it. Is that a good thing? Number 20, if you have a question or you need help with a project you're working on or if you want to get into this stuff, join my Discord. There's a lot of people there that are either beginners or experienced and they're all willing to help and give you advice. The link to that will be in the description. Number 21, when working with flares, pant openings at about 12 inches and wider will swallow up your shoes. But this also depends on your shoe size. Number 22, you can cleanly remove the seam stitches by picking the seam stitch at the end from where the original stitch finished. Number 23, instead of sewing the inseam back into a flat felt seam, you can instead sew it into a regular seam to increase the width of the pant legs by about half an inch. Number 24, before making a patch repair, turn the pants inside out and iron the distressings to flatten the area. Doing this will clean up the look of the distressed area and it'll make it easier to work with. Number 25, if you can't reach an area with your sewing machine, you can hand sew it instead. Number 26, a shortcut to sewing a waistband back 
on is to attach it back to the pants using pins. One on both ends, one on both sides, and then one on the back to hold it in place, and then you just sew it back in with your sewing machine. Again, it's not the correct way to do it, but a shortcut. Number 27, instead of darning with a straight stitch, try out darning with a zigzag stitch instead for a different look. Number 28, you can increase the length of your pants by about an inch if you undo the original hem and sew it back together by folding along the crease closest to the end of the pants. Or you can leave the hem open to increase the length by a little bit more. Number 29, an iron is your best friend. It makes your project easier to work on. You can iron out wrinkles and creases, make new creases, stuff like that. Number 30, most projects take hours to complete. I spent around like 20 to 25 hours just for the patchwork darning section of it. And the hand sewing part, that took probably like 30 hours. So when you do finish it, take a step back and admire your work and say to yourself, I did that. Personally, I do this because it helps confirm that all of the hours that was invested into the project was worth it. Number 31, the best way to go about a project is to think about it in layers. First, you start off with the base, and then when that's done, you work on the next layer of designs and go from there. Number 32, if you're trying to find your style, try out every different kind of DIYing technique that you can think of until you find something that you feel you naturally gravitate towards. For me, I say it in like every video, it's hand sewing and hand embroidery. Number 33, before slash go stitching, draw out guidelines with fabric chalk for precise stitches. Number 34, be open to every style or fit of clothes, no matter what is the current trend at the time. This opens many more doors rather than sticking with just one single look. Number 35, find an inspiration or someone that you can look up to that can help you improve and motivate you at the same time. Number 36, using Elmer's glue or a temporary glue helps hold fabric in place when prepping to patch repair or adding in patchwork. Number 37, when you're hand sewing through a thick layer of fabric, you may find it hard to pull the needle through. So to help with this, you can take a pair of pliers and it'll get the job done. Number 38, when thinking of a new design, think outside of the box for certain things. For example, when darning, use a zigzag stitch instead of a straight stitch. Or instead of square patches for patchwork, use circular patches instead. Number 39, a transparent ruler is probably one of the most helpful and essential tools in your kit to get exact measurements and straight lines. And number 40, I say the best one for last, and it's to Nike everything. And if you don't know what that means, it's just what their motto is, just do it. A lot of times I find myself just, you know, thinking way too much about how I should go about doing this or that for the pants or for the project I'm working on. Basically, I end up just overthinking everything. And it is understandable to be that way because, you know, sometimes the pants that you're working on may be the only one that you have. And if you mess up, you know, that's it. <laughs> it's wraps for that thing. But like everything, you gotta take a risk, just do it. You never know what the final outcome will be until you actually do it. You know, like, don't be scared, bruh. Don't worry about it too much, especially if you do make a mistake. I mean, we're all DIYers here. We can find a way to, you know, make something out of that mistake, maybe into something new. And who knows, maybe that mistake that you made may end up being like your most favorite design that you've ever created, you know? Everything is just trial and error and everything involves taking risks. So instead of thinking so much about it, instead of worrying about, oh, I might mess this up, just do it. Just Nike everything. But there you guys have it, 40 tips for DIYing. Hopefully you guys found them helpful and can take some of them and put them into practice, you know? Thank you guys again for 40K. That's, it's, that's still crazy, bro. Next up, 50K, 75K, 100K, so on, so forth. Man, I'm excited. But that's gonna wrap it up for this video. If you guys found these tips that I gave you guys informative in any way, shape, or form, make sure to drop a like. Hit that subscribe button as well. It's totally free and I'd appreciate it. Follow my socials, join my Discord, all of those links in the description down below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.